Next up, Bob's going to talk uh, about our first topic, which is automated CJ and linearity racks, and he'll give an explanation as to why, but basically, what automates all these racks? How does that work? So, kind of a nice little gadget. Good morning. My Bob. Nice to see you all. Thanks for coming out, especially, you know, great news COVID. Return to normal, so you appreciate it. Uh, this topic is going to be uh, basically about audits, uh, audit cylinders, and how you apply audit cylinders to uh, different types of systems. Um, we are doing more and more of these upgrades in things where we're um, selling just an audit rack with existing systems customer. And uh, just because it's a little bit easier to um, No, 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 you're good. Um, uh, it's a little bit easier to run with an automated rack as opposed to some methods that have been done in the past. So, you know, it, um, I don't really think I need this. Oh, do I need it for the? Um, yeah, maybe. Okay, so uh, just a brief description of what linearities and CGAs audit tests are. I assume most of you are um, knowledgeable in this understanding of how of why we're doing these tests and what they're for, but just a brief uh, overview. Um, you know, every day you have to do a daily calibration check, and once a quarter you have to do an audit check. And the purpose of the audit is to verify that the analyzers are linear across um, the full scale range. Um, of, of, of each uh, range of the analyzer. So you see when you do a zero check, you know, you're down at the, the zero point down there, your daily count zero, and then if you scan, you're up around 80 or 90 percent. So both the dailies, uh, once a quarter, you have to do the two middle points, which are below and the mid. And if you're looking for a straight line between all those points, it tells you that. Oh, look at that. Okay. Linear. Straight line. That's what we like. We'd also like to go to the next slide. Hey. Okay, so it's working. All right. Uh, so different types of tests uh, for audit tests. You know, you're doing CGAs and you're doing linearities. And the basic thing is CGAs are Part 60 requirements. So sites that are only Part 60, that's all they have to do. Um, sites that are also Part 75 would have to um, just do a more advanced test with Part 75. You're you're doing the a low and a mid and a high point rather than just the low and the mid. Um, but the low and the mids are really the same range most of the time. Okay, and then part 75, do the low and the mid and then the high. Uh, so instead of part 60, part 75, we just call them audit tests so that you know uh, they're really the same type of test and they have to happen once a quarter. Um, older systems that when we used to put out uh, systems way back when, 20 years ago, um, a lot of times you didn't have a high range on your CO analyzer that was needed to be that needed to be certified. You didn't have a high range of knocks that definitely needed to be certified. It's sort of a um, site to site basis whether or not you need to do those. These days you have to do the high ranges all the time. You know so. You have a low range CO, high range CO. So um, back then, blending cylinders wasn't as common because you didn't have to be high range. Now, because you do, 
we blend the cylinders. And blending the cylinders and oxygen to CO together allows you to do two tests at the same time. So it, it saves a lot of time. I know there's a lot of sites out there right now that still have um, the methodology of running single um, audits. You know, they just run their CO by itself and then they run their NOx and they run the CO high range and the NOx high range. So it takes a while to get through the test. Um, the one I'm getting to here is uh, we have uh, fields upgrades. We require that you mix these cylinders in order to compress the number of cylinders involved. Otherwise, it's, there's too many cylinders to put on the side of the shelf. Um, so some methods. Uh, older systems don't have, may not have dedicated audit uh, cylinders and uh, audit ports. Instead, the way we did it was we would um, have your daily cylinders all set up with the solenoids so there's no extra valves. You would take those daily cylinders off and put your audits on to those valves. And that's a really um, simple way. It doesn't add a lot of hardware, but it, it, it means you have to do leak checks after you're done. You don't want to disconnect your daily cylinders. So this is not a advised method and we basically don't do this anymore at all. So what we're doing instead is um, you know, this is, this is how you make connections with the, with the cylinder uh, adapters. And then you have to look at your chart to figure out where to put your cylinders. It's kind of complicated. The techs, I'm sure, aren't very happy doing it this way. So uh, we've gotten away from that. And now we have, um, but the simplest way to do it is to have audit low and audit mid ports. So you get your daily cylinder set up, and then you got these two ports, which are on the bulkhead, and they're just sitting there, you know, quarter inch fittings, and you can put your audit cylinders up to there, your low and the mid. And you can run your tests one at a time, hooking up two cylinders, the low and mid, taking those out, putting two more cylinders to run a different range test and that sort of thing. Uh, so that's better, and this is kind of our standard, if, you know, you don't get the gold uh, version of the sentence, you know, the gold version would be, okay, this is just another view of how it works, and you get the low and mid, and then your daily cylinders are high. And your daily cylinder, you don't have to disconnect it, so that's a good thing, not to worry about leak checks on that. Um, so the high would be there if you need the linearity. Um, but the best way to do it, the gold standard now, is the dedicated audit station. So you have a six position cylinder rack with all your audit ports. Now we say six, it's not necessarily always six, sometimes it's seven, uh, it might be eight. And the reason why is if, if you've got many analyzers that you can't blend all the cylinders, but in particular it's ammonia NOx that causes uh, potential to have another cylinder station. Uh, ammonia NOx has a different range than your stack NOx usually, has a slightly higher range and so you have another set of cylinders involved. Okay, so this is what it looks like dedicated cylinder rack. Uh, you get the low and mid O2, low and mid NOx low range, and low and mid NOx high range. It's all plumbed in, and each one has a valve, etc. Okay, so now getting to really where we wanted to go, which is field modifications. Uh, for people out there who are sites out there that have older systems and want to get rid of this methodology of sharing cylinders and uh, ports and whatnot moving cylinders around, um, you know, you can get a dedicated rack. So the biggest thing is um, you have to find a place for the rack on the side of the shelter. Um, solenoids, uh, maybe, okay, so when we build a rack is uh, when we have a field mod is we build a rack, a six position rack, and we've got a box that goes on the side and the box has all the solenoids in it. So we don't have to do any modifications inside the sun shelter, you know, find room for all these valves. Instead, it's all in a box that comes with the rack. Um, here's that box right there on the side. Uh, the great thing about having that box right next to the rack is we can do all that plumbing in-house before we ship the rack into that box. It's connected to the rack itself with a little extension on the rack. And the only thing you have to do is run a single tube from that box into the shelter. So it makes it a fairly straightforward, easy uh, modification in the field. 
Uh, the only other thing you have to do though is get wires down there to control the valves. So you run in PLC wires, you know, PLC outputs to those valves and inside that box. And you'll see that's how it looks in there. You got all your valves on um, each of the tests um, for each facility. Okay, so the biggest thing is do you have space for the rack? Uh, if you do, that's that's great. Um, you don't have to move any conduits or anything like that. Um, you can get it on there, uh, put the box on there, run it to your PLC. You might need to have um, extended PLC cards if you don't have enough digital outputs and whatnot. That, that would be handled on a case to case basis. Um, great thing with Compact Logix. If you have Compact Logix, you can just throw in another card without uh, worrying about too much there. Um, okay, and then the blended cylinders, you're allowed to, you're allowed to do. To do two tests at one time. Um, okay. And then we just make sure we get all designed that way. So that's that's the ideal thing is to have a, a dedicated rack. Now, some sites um, may not have the room for that rack, or they may not want to have dedicated stations because that means you have to have cylinders at each one of your shelters. Um, so you've got four sets of um, audit cylinders instead of just one. Uh, so a portable rack is another option. So the portable rack is basically a rack that's um, same same deal. It's got a cow solenoid box. Uh, the biggest difference is that it's got a hole in the bottom for forklift to lift it up. So you put your cylinders on here, hook them all up, you get your box, with all your solenoids. And then here you've got a cord uh, that's uh, Canon type cord that has all the uh, wire connections for each of the solenoids that you plug right into the bulkhead. So that makes it pretty simple. You just bring it up to your, your bulkhead for each system, plug in the cord, and you can go. Do uh, one shelter at a time. And that's correct. One other option, um, if you don't like any of these more expensive ones is to uh, just have two dedicated regulators, uh, regulators and uh, CPA adapters for those regulators, and you just hook those up to your audit low and audit mid ports. So we have a little kit that you, you can sell that does that. You know, pretty, pretty basic. Get regulators and get all your CPA adapters to, to make all the steps. And that's it. So if anybody is interested in uh, making some modifications and getting a rack. So have you all run the numbers? I mean, clearly, you know, again, you're using less gas bottles, you're saving time on, you know, your ice packs, et cetera. Have you all run an estimated uh, payback, payback number? No. Because, you know, years of payback? No. That's, it's probably worth an analysis on that, okay. especially if you have single uh, audit tests right now. You're going to that's what I'm You're gonna cut the, the time in half okay. run, run in the confusion. And then if you have a leak, that's a dead cylinder potentially. After you're done, if you're disconnecting cylinders, your daily cylinders, you got a leak and you lost a cylinder, that's another consideration. Uh, on that portable rack, uh, yeah, you got all the regulators there. Do you have a like, quick disconnect for the gas to go through the, the shelter? Or is it a no. The, the, the portable rack? Yeah. No, the way that would work is we've got two ports that we would have to install on, on the bulkhead, and those two ports would have tubes that go into that rack. Hey, uh, the main connection to the bulkhead for the gas would be a quick connect type, though, right? Has it been a quick connect? I, I can't remember what we have. I mean, it should be. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not. I think we, we in the past we just used a, a Teflon tube and just you just you know, the compression fit and just connect it that way. Anybody else? Um, also, now you have it looks like your standard port your portable. I'm kind of interested in that, but um, it looks like you have a few bottles in front and some in back. 
No. So our linearity cabinet is like, uh, it looks like it looks only up. You got four bottles on that side, and four bottles on the other. Is that how yeah. Mm -hmm. No, there's eight in this one. So could you have just six in a row instead of double thickness? Sure, we could do that. I don't think we have done that yet. Uh, if we have, if you only need six, would we do three and three back to back? Um, no, because but there's no reason not to. Our, our linear racks are already in the back of our shack. They, they have they handle the six bottles there. Okay. And I'm thinking if, if this is maybe we could go with something like this that we could store somewhere else, like you said, so we can have one bottle shut off and everything. But we do linear and just port truck it over and set it in place and just click this thing and go through the shack for the bottles. But it would be too wide to go on the cement pad where the shelter is, but if it was one row, then I could set it there. Yeah. Well, we built these things in our house, you know, when we, if we get, get back there, you'll see it, uh, our craft shop. So we can, we can do pretty much any design that, that's going to work for you. So we can make it smaller, we can make it, uh, you know, one six deep and six wide, it's not a problem. I think the one disadvantage to do a big long one is you're going to have some visibility yeah. on the back. Right. Well, yeah, and I was, that went through my mind, and maybe even if we needed to, uh, obviously the force wouldn't be as deep and there wouldn't be some visibility while, especially on a transport, right? Mm -hmm. Right? You could put just a bar that you know, like hits like a hole like a transport. I'm, I'm yeah. sure it's something we could do. Yeah, we probably put hooks on top and then have straps that you can connect to the forklift. We can make them good. Wait, what? Wow, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? One of the questions that comes up periodically, and, and I got it from the last user's group evaluation, uh, but we never talk about prices of what these things cost. Hmm. Uh, and somebody says, well, what is this going to cost me? Uh, I will tell you that we sold uh, five of these to the power plant in uh, Northern California last year for $1,000 a piece. So the six bottle configuration. Now, steel prices have gone up and all the other stuff that goes with that, but that's a ballpark that you can start with. It. Uh, all you have to do is write us and tell us if you're interested and we can uh, come up with a design and a pricing for your specific installation. Uh, but that's a ballpark from the recent installation we did last year. Is that, is that for parts and labor? No, I did, that was just the parts. And then the installation, our guys went out and spent uh, a day at each plant every month. Well, you know, those are permanent installations. We have the regulators, regulators and everything already installed, now, and we have you know, multiple stem shacks, and each one of them has the regulators. We could almost pull the regulators out of one of our shacks and send them to you. You could just any way we get. Sure. Yeah, that's where most of the cost is obviously with regulators at almost a thousand feet or over a thousand. And so I was just saying, you know, a lot of the material, even the hoses and everything, is, uh, is, since you have multiple shafts, you can, you can gut one of them and send you all the materials and you can get everything. Yeah, we can definitely customize whatever you need. The only concern would be is if they have the bonnet on the back, that those ones are screwed on that bar. Hold up. Um, Bob, I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Whatever the situation. Okay, um, Bob, I have one. It says, how much is the fully automated portable rack that's shown? Ready? Just depends this on the cost. One, how, what would we sell this one for? Oh, geez. now this is eight positions. That's eight positions. So Most likely it's six. Far. So you're, you're probably looking at about $14,000. That's nine. Actually. Yeah, that's nine. Yeah. 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 Are they, are they staggered? Yeah, the, the cylinders, uh, the regulators are staggered. Yeah. 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 So, all right. And then, yeah, uh, it says, do they make an enclosed shelter? We are in the Northeast and wonder about cold weather. Uh, we've not done one that's uh, Enclosed, I don't believe, but 
we do enclose cylinder racks, so we can come up with it. Yeah, we haven't done it yet. So typically, with your old installations, is this not normal? For, I mean, when you put in things 10, 20 years ago, that we didn't do this. You just had the normal three or four bottle setup. We would just have yeah the daily cow setup, and you would take those off, put in your, your audits using the same hoses and system regulators. That was you know, the way it worked for a long time, and then we started with the low mid ports, the mid ports. Uh, sorry, I think uh, the question about the enclosed shelter was meant for the built-in type. Oh yeah. Um, Yes, we can do it. I, I'm, we're doing one right now, actually, for, for a customer that is enclosed. It's going to be in a negative 40 degree Fahrenheit um, setting. So uh, we, it will be heated and whatnot. So it's possible. Uh, it's going to be a lot bigger. Uh, it's got to be insulated and whatnot if that's required. Or, um, But yes, uh, we haven't done it yet, but we can do that. And did, did your other person he have a response on the, the, the pricing? Can you tell? Um, Fourteen thousand is ballpark. No, I don't think there's been any other messages. Uh, thumbs up for the enclosed shelter. Okay, um, tell me get in contact, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. All righty. Anybody else? We'll turn it over to see the next. It's a little bit hard sometimes because you have to see the little design on systems that are going from there. It's, uh, it's always a challenge to come up with pricing off the top of your head. I'm going to answer a question that Dave sort of asked and didn't come all the way out. Dave was, uh, was why don't we do this all the time? Uh, and the answer to that is really, really simple. Every project that we bid, we offer it, and then who's ever building the plant often goes, well, I don't have to operate this thing, so it's cheaper if I don't put it put it on the shelf. And so, how many times? Uh, we bid this, and then six months later, after the plant starts up, the end customer, not the Keyway, Black and Beach, the Siemens people who are building the plants, the end customer comes back and says, Can you add this to the site? Can you add this to the shelter? So the engineering group now is starting, has started to design with that in mind that the end customer is probably going to be adding these automated racks onto the, on, onto the shelters. And so uh, just because the A and E's are trying to save money and they don't have to operate a plant after six months and they're gone or a year or whatever, uh, they're still valuable to the end customer and the end customer is going to want them. So if we design part of that to be ready to go and we ship it out of our door, then we're more ready and the customer is more ready for that. So we're starting to see more and more of that, but that's why that doesn't happen. It's offered on every single stones that we build. I mean, we, we've had problems where we have multiple units and our guys are switching it out. And for peaker units, we miss linearities because we can't get them in and out quick enough. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really important to have this to be able to automate it. Right. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. This makes it really easy. Yeah, the automated linearities are. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty quick. So it's, it's a very nice system. 